Welcome to episode 26 of Little Bobbins Knits. My name is Danny, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Little Bobbins. We have a Ravelry group, which it would be lovely if you came and joined, and you can find that by searching Little Bobbins Knits. And show notes for the podcast can be found at littlebobbins.co.uk. Thank you so much for being here today, and I wanted to say the hugest thank you to everyone who got in touch to wish David and I your congratulations. Uh, that really meant such a lot to me that you took the time to do that, so thank you. Yeah, it, it was really, really lovely. I really appreciated that. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I hope you enjoy it and hope you come back again. And if you've watched before, thank you so much for coming back. It means such a lot to me. So today I've got some works in progress to show you. No finished objects, lots of lovely things, and we'll announce that fondant fibre giveaway at the end. I've got some treats here that came with one of my lovely things this week. Treats for Bobbin. And so he's just sat here... <laughs> very patiently looking at the bag, his eyes just fixed on the bag. They're very delicious treats so he's just going wild for them. <laughs> you funny monkey. Completely in the zone, he just can't wait to get a treat. And that's him trying to steal the bag. <laughs> I put it on the bed earlier and Next second, I looked around and he was trotting off with it in his mouth. Maybe we should give him a treat now. You want a little treat? There you go. Oh, good boy. That's probably it now. These treats were from Lena and Gus Gustav. From a wee bit nitty podcast. Which I love, but I'll get into that later. So, he's going to be looking for where the treats have gone now. <laughs> anyway, so, work's in progress. Now, I've still been not quite into anything. <laughs> he's still looking at where I put the treats. Such a silly monkey. Um, yeah, I still haven't been able to get into my knitting. I've been sort of knitting a little bit on a few different things. I knit a few more rows on my campsite but I haven't bought that because you can't really tell. And I decided to knit something that I wouldn't have to think about too much but that still gives me exciting results. So I was knitting on my sock blank socks. This is a sock blank from Easy Knits. I think it was the Power of the Night colourway. And it's really lovely yarn, very soft. I haven't blocked this yet, so you can still, I don't know if you can really see, but it's got kind of wiggly stitches. But I'm really pleased with how this one has come out. I knit this one from the toe up, because I'm using this sock blank, which is sort of mirrored. Where's my... Excuse me, Bobby. I've gotten a bit of a tangle in here somehow. Oh. It's sort of mirrored, so it started with this pink colour. And then went on to the black, and then went on to the gold. So now I'm knitting down from the gold to the pink. So I'm doing this one top down. So that it will hopefully kind of match. But I'm not sure. I find it quite hard to judge how much fabric you're going to get from this already knitted fabric. I think I underestimate it a bit. So it might mean that um, there's more of this orangey bit in the red in the leg. Oh, my brain's not working. But we'll see. I was knitting this on my signatures, but I prefer my higher, higher sharps, so I switched them over. They're just smoother, 
And since I just finished my rainbow socks, which is what I was knitting on these needles before, I decided just to use them on this. So only a tiny bit more has been done on that, but the first sock's finished. And I always block my socks. I was watching a homespun house and Molly was asking why people block their socks. And I don't know why anyone else does it, but I always do it because I like how they look when you take photos of them, all nicely blocked. And because I give lots of my socks away to mum, I like her to receive them in a sort of pristine condition. So I like them to look as neat as they possibly can. So I always block them. And I like the smell of the soak, the jasmine eucalam that I use, so any excuse to use that. So yeah, that's why I block my socks. I don't know why other people do. be interesting to find out if you wanted to share. So that's my first work in progress. And that's living in a sort of monochromatic psychedelic mushroom bag that was a complete bargain from Paper Chase and I love it. Such a fantastic size. My next work in progress is in my lovely bag from Himiko. It just makes me smile every time I pick it up. And this is my test knit shawl for Be Mandarins. Melody of the Mandarin's podcast and blog. I got some new yarn. I don't know if you watched last week, but I'd started it in this artisanal alpaca four ply in this chocolate brown natural colour. I was just not feeling it. That yarn was sort of a bargain buy, which I couldn't resist. And in hindsight, I probably should have resisted because I haven't been able to find a project that's right for it yet. And yeah, it just doesn't doesn't call to me at all. So I was having a look around online and I was on tangledyarn.co.uk and I saw this yarn. It's rosy green wool and it's Manx Merino Fine and I was really intrigued by this yarn. This is the Somerset Rose colour and Manx Lockton is an endangered sheep breed and there is a percentage of Manx Lockton in this yarn so buying this yarn um, the proceeds, some of the proceeds contribute towards the Rare Breed Survival Trust and also using their, um, the fleece of the Rare Breed animals is a good thing too. The um, dye process is all um, as non-harmful as possible. <clears throat> so this yarn just really interested me and I love the colour. It's a really lovely sort of <clears throat> dusky pink. And because of the colour in the Manx Lockton fleece, you can see sort of shots of heathery browns going through, which I just think is lovely. It's got a very woolly feel, which I like, and but it's soft. It's still very soft, I guess, because it's got a merino content as well. But yeah. It's processed in England. The Manx wool comes from a certified organic farm in Devon and it's blended with organic merino wool from Patagonia. So yeah, I was really interested in the story behind this yarn as well as the colour and it's beautiful to use. So I've been knitting a little bit on the test knit I have had to um, knit it and rip it out as well because I tried it on a different size needle and I wasn't happy with how it was coming out so I started it again. So it's very small but I'm going to get to work, to that, on, get to work on that this week. 
because I do love how this yarn is knitting up and I'm intrigued to see the pattern come out because it's not really had a chance to get started yet. So that's going to be my mission for this week. So that's my second work in progress and I really, I couldn't recommend this yarn higher, more highly, it's just beautiful. I think they only have a limited amount because of the rare breeds, they only have a really small quantity each year. But if you can get your hands on some, I would because it's gorgeous. Just have a sip of my tea, I've got a bit of a <clears throat> gravelly throat. I'm drinking this nutty chocolate flavour Assam from Twinings. And it's if you open the bag, it smells like Ferrero Rocher. Oh, and I love Ferrero Rocher. They are just, they are a dangerous chocolate. It's sort of a praline with a hazelnut inside. Yummy. It doesn't taste like Ferrero Rocher though. It just tastes like a slightly chocolatey, hazelnutty tea, but not strong. I don't have mine with milk. I don't have any teas with milk except English breakfast which is probably not interesting to anyone but me, but there you go. <laughs> mm. It is very nice, but it doesn't taste like it smells. So my next work in progress is quite the obsession. I, I was in on my own on Saturday because David was going to football and mum was out so couldn't look after Bobbin so I couldn't go to football. So instead what I did was covered the living room floor in yarn and started to crochet a blanket. Now this is the Weekender blanket pattern by Sandra Paul who is Cherry Heart, who is Sandra Cherry Heart on Instagram. I mentioned her last week because she just makes me want to crochet. Now she has made me crochet. <laughs> this pattern is so much fun. There's loads of banging next door, I hope you can't hear that. Um, but this pattern is so much fun. I absolutely love it. I am using some really old stash. It's Stylecraft Special DK. I got this yarn, oh so long ago, I can't even remember. It was, it was a day that we went to an away game and we were playing Bristol City and there is this wool shop in Bristol called Get Knitted and they had an entire wall of the, all the different colours of Stylecraft. So I thought, oh I'll get a blanket's worth, make a crochet blanket. And, as it goes, another thing that's probably not interesting to anyone is Bristol City are going to be in the same league as us next year, so I'll get to have another trip to the yarn shop. Yay! Anyway, gosh, aren't I full of useless facts today? So, I bought this yarn with the intention of making the Something Pretty block into a blanket. I think that's by Millie Makes, but I'll put links in the show notes you make these little flowers. So I've made quite a few of these little flowers. Oh, and then I've thrown one on the floor. All these different colours. I have no idea why I chose these colours. Because they're so not me. But I... I don't know, I think I must have just got overwhelmed by all the different colours in this wall of colour and gone with this really random selection. <laughs> but this is as far as this blanket got. And I should have known that because I tried the block before and it only got as far as this cushion. It actually only got as far as this for a very long time and then I thought, oh, I have to do something about this. And then just crocheted up the ones around the edge and did a giant granny square for the for the back. I didn't sew in any ends, I just sewed, I just crocheted the cushion up, which is the best. 
Maybe not for longevity, but for not having to sew in ends. That was wonderful. So yeah, I struggled on trying to get that cushion finished. So why I thought I would make an entire blanket out of those motifs, I have no idea. So that stalled. And then I thought, oh, maybe I could make a babette blanket. So I got a, cu a couple more colours because... I think the Babette blanket uses 17 and I didn't have 17 so I bought a few more and I made these blocks and that's it and they won't make a blanket as you can probably imagine they're very... that's three so <laughs> not quite big enough for a blanket but I got bored of that intensely bored and all of these different colour changes means another two ends to weave in and oh, no, that just doesn't work for me. So the yarn all went back into stash again and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Then I saw everyone was making these fantastic log cabin blankets. So I thought, oh, maybe I could make a log cabin blanket. So I started that. And that's how far that one got. So that's not quite a blanket either. <laughs> and then I was just thinking the other day, or maybe I should just let it go and live at Mum's. Because she's got a bit more storage space than we have. And I can't think of any sort of use for it at the moment. I think it's really difficult when you're not really drawn to the colours. Well, I certainly find it really difficult to use stuff that I'm not drawn to the colours. And these colours do not call to me. But then, I don't actually know what came over me on Saturday, but I just thought I would give this little block a go. And I couldn't stop. It's such a fun block to do. It's really repetitive, so it's easy to remember. And... It's join as you go, which is all explained in the pattern. And I'm in love with that. It is such a fantastic technique. But then I got sidetracked and I was thinking about the granny square blanket that I started last week. And I thought, oh, maybe, maybe I should do that in this, in this block. Do you call it blocks? I don't know. I think I'm thinking blocks because of quilt blocks. But I don't actually know what they're called. But anyway, I thought maybe I should do that in the sock yarn. And I am so in love with this. I am so in love with this in such a serious way. It is... It's extreme. I can't put this thing down. It is so much fun to do. I love this little block. I was at... Rainbow Silks, which is our sort of most local yarn shop with Mum on Friday. And I picked up this little book with different granny squares in because I was thinking about my granny square crochet blanket and thinking, I'm, I enjoy doing the granny squares, but I'm not quite sure. So I was wondering if I would maybe do some different granny square motifs, whatever they're called, and mix them up. I thought that might be quite fun. But then, I started this. And this is it now. This, you know when a project just grabs you in the heart and that's it, you know you're in love with it. That's totally what's happened with this. It uses probably less than three gram, it definitely uses less than three grams of yarn because the little granny squares use three grams and I undid those and crocheted them in here and still had a bit left over but it's so much fun and it uses because it uses such a tiny amount it means that you get really different results from the same ball of sock yarn like that's from one ball of sock yarn and that is from the same one I don't think I'll be able to get them both in the same frame let me see so yeah, 
that one and that one are both from the same ball of sock yarn but you get a completely different result which I think is fun and there will have to be a lot of these little blocks to make an entire quilt so I won't be able to just use one yarn because that would be a lot. I think I've got about 40 blocks now because I just can't put it down. There's lots of ends to sew in but that's okay. So I've used lots of lovely different lovely yarns in here. This is a Knitting Goddess mini scheme. This is from the Knitting Goddess 2. This is some socks that I knit for mum. That one is Tosh Merino Light and that one I got from a swap that I did with Sarah who is Love Sock Wall who has a podcast which is lovely and I love how obsessed she is with knitting socks. It's so, so inspiring. That's from some Koi Goo. That's from a mini scheme from a swap that I did with Kim. It's a Countess of Blaze one and I love that. Squimbalina on Ravelry. That's from my Twisted Limone Christmas Eve socks. I won't go through all of them, we'll be here forever. But what other ones have I got? Some, uh, some sparkly ones. That's from the socks I just finished for Mum. That one's from Sarah, whose yarn is fun. That one is from a brand new ball of yarn that I just bought on Friday and haven't knit up, obviously. But I can resist stealing a little bit. But yes, that's from David's socks. That's from my very first pair of socks that I knitted. I'm so in love with this. It's just so much fun to do. And they're so quick. I timed myself, obviously, and I average at about seven minutes and that's with deciding where to put them. <laughs> Incredibly sad, I know. But it's so much easier doing this than it is doing this. This is DK weight and I'm using a 4mm hook. But because they're solid colours and because they touch, the colours touch so many other colours, you have to be quite considerate in where you put the different colours. I still think I'm going to continue with this by the way. But with this, this is sock yarn and I'm using a 2.5mm hook. Because there's so many different colours, it's so much easier to find where you're going to put the next block. And I love the fact that you can just put them anywhere. I could, well because it's still quite small, I haven't got, I haven't got out to a, the size that it's going to remain. I can just put them anywhere. And I love that. I think that's one of the reasons that's got me really passionate about this. It's one of the reasons that I really enjoy knitting my other sock yarn blanket because I can knit off in whichever direction I fancy really. That's why I like this. It appeals to me more than doing say the crochet blankets in rows because you have to decide how wide you're going to make that at the beginning because you have to chain that amount of chains that you can then use as your foundation. But this, you can just go wild, put them anywhere. And I find that so exciting. Also because it's join as you go, I think one of the reasons that I wasn't entirely loving the granny squares is because I knew I would be making a stack of those that I would then have to deal with connecting. And I was going to use the join as you go method with that which would have been good and would have been a a fine way to join them. I don't think I would sew blocks together, I just don't have that sort of patience. But this, because you just join it in on your last round, it's done and I just love it. Oof. I really really love it. It's quite a dense fabric but I think that'll soften up with wear and washing. 
I'm completely addicted. I did, I sat down for a cup of tea this morning and I'd done three before I could get up. <laughs> and because they're just so quick, you can just sort of sit and do one and then you just think, oh, maybe I could just squeeze another one in. So, yeah, I love this. The Weekender Blanket by Sandra Paul is a free pattern, which is fabulous. And it's really, really clear. I, I like that it's got written instructions and the diagram. I don't know what you call that in crochet. Is it called a crochet chart? Um, I'm not sure, but it's got that sort of diagram chart type thing, which I find really, really helpful. I like those crochet charts. They really help you to visualise what the block is going to be like. Like knitting charts, I suppose. But I like that there's both in the pattern. That's really handy because then you can just use whichever you're more comfortable with. I love it. I can't stop touching it. Anyway, I should. <laughs> but I really, really enjoy that block. The only thing I'm doing slightly differently is I'm starting it with a magic loop. That's not what it's called. Magic circle. The middle bit where you just cinch in the round instead of chaining and then joining the chains. And I'm only doing that because that's what I always do, and so I thought I would do it with this as well. Bobbin started shouting, so I had to grab him. You grumpy. So I'm hoping I continue with this. I can't say for certain whether I will or not, because the colours, I'm just not drawn to the colours. And... These projects, they're such a, there's something, I don't know how to explain it, but it's an all round thing, isn't it? The reason that I love knitting, crochet, making, is I love the experience of it. I love the feel. I love the colours, I love the motions. I rarely do anything because I want the finished object. Unless it's for someone else, like Mum, who really decides that she needs a shawl in the next two weeks. <laughs> but I rarely make something because I really want the finished object. I usually make things because I really want to play with the technique or I want to use the yarn. And these colours, they just don't call to me. I don't know though, it might make a really fun summery blanket. I'm not sure. I'll have a think about it. I think this is the sort of instance where it would be useful with these colours if it was done separately and then seamed together. Because then you can sort of audition where the different colours are going to go. And I know that on Sandra's podcast, she said that she sort of made a few. I really recommend her podcast if you haven't seen it. It's wonderful. She sort of made a few, almost. So they were just ready to be joined. And then she could sort of try them out different places and see where they went best. So maybe I could do that. These balls of yarn are so big and cumbersome. So, I don't know. And I've got it into my head that I really want to try the Stylecraft Alpaca Tweed DK and make that into one of these blankets. This is as big as my crochet projects get. So to have three <laughs> going but this alpaca tweed is really nice. It's machine washable. It's got an acrylic content, but it's also got an alpaca content, and it's got the tweedy bits. I'll show you it next week because I've ordered some. Um, but I think that would make such a lovely, cosy one of these. 
I have no idea what the yarn is like, so I've only ordered two balls because Love Knitting had free shipping and I thought I could just give it a go with the not by the whole quantity. Obsession has hit. If you've used the Alpaca Stylecraft Alpaca Tweed DK, do let me know what you thought of it and whether you think that it'll actually work for this blanket. So I'm most intrigued. It'll probably be here tomorrow actually, so I'll be able to see, but I'm completely in love with this little motify type thing. It's so much fun. So, yes. Ooh, I love it. I was looking at how sort of just thinking how many will I actually need. And for my other sock yarn blanket, my knitted one, I think I'm going for about 260 squares. And about four of these is equal to one of the knitted squares. So it'll be quite a few. <laughs> but I have no desire to rush this. It's just a really, really enjoyable project. And I know I'll probably, my obsession will probably wane. But that's fine because I know that I'll pick it up again. The combination of playing with these lovely scraps of sock yarn that you need just the tiniest amount of and joining them together so it actually already looks like a thing it's not just a pretty pile of blocks it started to look like it might be a blanket one day that combination is just winning for me so I did that all weekend <laughs> I just couldn't put that little sock yarn blanket down it's just too addictive so there my works in progress on to lovely things as I mentioned oh this is what I'm keeping my little scraps in my mum bought me this really cute little tin so yeah I'm keeping some little mini skeins and it's one of the little balls of Regia. This is from Mum's first socks and then I've just got some mini skeins. Some that I've already balled up. Oh, and this, this is going to be an entire podcast about that blanket, isn't it? I was crocheting while asleep. I was so tired but I just couldn't stop. I should have stopped because I came downstairs yesterday and thought oh I'll just do another little hexagon and found that I had done a seven sided one. There was a little seven sided one just in there. I had, um, it, it was somewhere like that so I had already surrounded it on four sides but I noticed it looked wrong and that's because it had seven sides. But I just was able to snip it out and then put another one back in its place. And I thought that was brilliant because then if any of these get damaged during its life, I can quite simply snip it out and pop another one back in its place. So fun. I don't know where this long thread's coming from, but yeah. I'm keeping them all in there with my crochet hook as well. It's very cute. <laughs> so, anyway, moving on. Yes, Mum and I went to Rainbow Silks on Friday. It's in Great Missenden. It's a lovely shop. They have fabric and yarn. The yarns they have are Opal, Regia, um, Serdar, Rowan, Noro. Yeah, that's, I think that's all of them. Debbie Bliss, they also have. 
and yeah different fabrics they also have things for felting and dyeing all kinds it's a really good shop they also have lots and lots of magazines and I saw these magazines and they were half price I think they must be this is spring 2014 this is Knitting Traditions and I think this is distributed by Interweave Uh, FW Media. I'm not sure. It looks interweavy to me, but I was really interested in some of the articles. Knitting to Survive Stories from Around the World and Inspired and 21 Inspired Projects. Read the Diary of a Shetland Knitter. Colourwork Celebration. Fair Isle Bohus. And Sankar, I'm not sure how you pronounce those. If you if you do know, do let me know. But I just thought it was a really interesting looking magazine. Knitting stockings in Wales. I haven't actually looked at the patterns, I must say. I've just had a little look at some of the articles. Beautiful pictures. So I'm enjoying that. It's a proper read it magazine as opposed to a flick through and never look at it again magazine. And I also got this one, Enchanted Knits, because this was a half price or something as well, and I quite liked a few of the patterns in this. I don't know if I'll ever do them, but they look quite interesting. I haven't looked at this one as much as I have the other one. Let's see if I can find the pattern that I really liked. Should have put in a little post-it. Here it is. This is the Riddles with Dragons shawl by Kate Poe. I wonder if there's a better picture. I think I'm going to have to go through the index because this is just not working. I've forgotten what it's called now. Ah, Riddles with Dragons shawl. Yeah, reviewing stuff probably isn't going to be my forte either. But I just thought it was really pretty. I love the plain bits and then lovely pattern back. I thought that was a nice, nice combination. There's also a pair of socks in here by Rachel Coopy. Mm. Hansel and Gretel socks. This is the pattern page, so I don't want to lift it up too much, but I thought that they were nice as well. And I do like those colourwork charts. You can sort of keep them in your colourwork arsenal and just pop them into other things, can't you? Which I quite like. I also got this ball of opal. This is from the Best Friends range. It's colour 8866. Look at those lovely elephants. I was chatting with someone on Instagram. Luli. She's got a shop actually where she sells lovely bags. and But she was saying that she wanted all of this yarn. Because of the cute illustrations. And I was exactly the same. I was so taken by those little elephants. Holding hands. With the little flower. Completely adorable. And I love these colours as well. So, I've been missing knitting opal socks. I haven't knit any opal socks in ages. And opal is one of my favourite yarns for socks because it's just so hard wearing and so fun with the self patterning nature. I think this is a sort of stripy look. But I love opal. I find it quite soft. But I've mentioned before that I'm not really particularly delicate when it comes to woolly stuff. But yes, I really, really love that. Another lovely thing I got this week. 
I follow British Bee on Instagram and I'd noticed that she was dyeing up lots of Buffy inspired yarn. So I thought I'd go and have a little look on her shop and I completely couldn't resist this one. This is from British Bee Knits on Etsy and she's dyeing her way through the whole of Buffy. And I love Buffy. A huge amount. It's my favourite series of all time. And my mum loves Buffy as well, so I'm going to try and get us both a pair of socks out of this. I think if I use cream for the heels and toes, I might manage it. But this one is inspired from inspired by the episode Witch, which is in season one, and inspired by the quote, and you'll be stopping me how. And I just love it. I'm insanely geeky when it comes to Buffy. I think I could... Oh, you don't need to know quite how geeky it's ridiculous, but... Really, really pleased with that. Really excited to knit it up. I... I'm really excited to knit it up. There's just not enough time to do things now. I seem to have broken that barrier of not knowing what to knit. And now I just want to knit everything. Which is good. I wish when I was in that sort of lull, I could trust that I'd come out of it again. Because it always feels quite end of the worldy. But before long, I'm back wanting to knit everything. So yeah, I'm very excited about this yarn and I can't wait to see what other colourways she does. I don't think we have many. Oh. And I was thinking of um, starting this for Yonder Woman's pop culture knit-along that she's got on at the moment. I need to find out when it finishes to see if I'd be able to knit them in time. But I, I'd really like to join in with that because I love Melinda's podcast. So I don't think we have quite as many pop culture-y type yarns in this country. I might be wrong, if I am, please do let me know, because I do like a pop culture reference with my knitting. I know that Fondant Fibre does some. I saw on her shop when I was buying things last week that she had some Babadook inspired yarn. And that film... I quite liked the film, but I wanted it to be scarier, but anyway. But yes, I don't think we have quite as many pop culture inspired yarns in this country. I know you have lots and lots in America. It's dangerous because if you love something, if you love a programme or... You just want everything... Oh, okay, you might not. But I just want everything related to that. It's... Yeah, it's a, it's a hazard for the obsessive mind, I think. But yeah, if you do know of any in this country, even though I probably shouldn't know about it because it means that I'll buy it. I would love to hear about them anyway. So that would be a lot of fun to knit. And this, I think, is knit, knits up with thick um, yellow, thin white, thick red, thin white. Sort of striping sequence. So that would be a lot of fun. Right. This podcast feels a little bit all over the place. I hope it's not too jarring. I was thinking maybe I shouldn't film today because... Oh, with all the noise and I couldn't wake up this morning for the life of me. So I wasn't sure that I'd be the best company, but... I thought I'd give it a go and I'm al always my worst critic so hopefully it'll be fine. But anyway, see you ramble. Oh. Um, I got a fantastic package from Lena from the A Wee Bit Nitty podcast. She's Furk Badagak on Instagram and Ravelry. I love her podcast, it's one of my absolute favourites. I enjoy every episode and 
Not in small part because I love Gustav. He is the most handsome dog. Precious. And he's so cuddly. He's like a giant bear. Anyway, and Lena's always knitting really, really wonderful things. And I love seeing the things that her mum knits. And she's got just such a lovely podcast. But we did a swap. And the swap goodies from Lena arrived. And they were just amazing. So she sent me some of her favourite yarns. So I'm I'm not going to try and pronounce things but this has got alpaca, merino and nylon and it recommends using, I know Lena mentioned that she uses two and a half or three millimetre needles for this one because it's a bit thicker. But it's lovely and soft and I love this golden mustard colour. So she sent me some of that. So I'll have to think about what I'm going to do with that. She also sent me some Drops Fable in this lovely black currant colour. It's actually colour 104 but looks like black currant to me. So that'll be fun. And she also sent me some of this which she's mentioned before in her podcast is one of her favourite yarns. Oh, look at the cute sheep. And I love this colour, it's like Palmer Violets. Really sort of dusky, no dusty, light, light purple. Really pretty. So, I'm very excited about those. And I think... Because Lynn has got so many lovely sock patterns. I think I definitely want to knit one of her sock patterns in this. Because they're just lovely. So I'm really, really excited about those. She also sent me some minis. Which look like very generous minis, actually. Oh, now I've shown you. I just had a brainwave. They need to go in that urgently. And she also sent me this fantastic bag that she'd made, which, how cute is that? And look at the zipper pull. Oh. <laughs> it is so cute and I can't fail to think of Lena whenever I use this. This is just so her. So I love it. And I'm excited that it's got some blue lining. I'm excited to use this now, I've shown you, because I wanted to save it. So, it's so cute. And I love her little labels. That's so sweet. And there were also treats for Bobbin, but he's gone off somewhere, so... But he did have one earlier, didn't he? Maybe I could coax him back, just for a little little treat and there was some chocolate for me. Bobbin, got a little treat. Of course he does. Come on then, you have to come up here. What's this? Oh, he loves these because they're like little lumps of meat. So they're very strong smelling. Do you want it? Come on then, you have to jump up. He's so sleepy today too. Come on then. I'll move this stuff out of the way so you can come up. I don't know if he can be bothered. So lazy. He's just looking at me as if to say, well, just pass it to me. You can reach. Come on. <laughs> good boy. Oh, you're so good. Come and give me a cuddle. Oh, was that nice? Oh, so nice. We had such a lazy weekend didn't we? We spent the whole of Saturday sat on the living room floor crocheting. But you'd think we'd been extremely active because he's very tired today. But yes, that was just a wonderful package to open. So thank you so much, Lena. 
it was really really exciting and I'm so excited to see what I'm going to make with those lovely yarns I definitely want to do I was thinking her Bertine pattern maybe for these for this colour because I think that would be incredibly pretty yeah if you don't already watch Lena's podcast I would highly recommend it I really really enjoy her podcast it is one of my absolute favourites so yeah do go and watch it if you haven't already I'll put links in the show notes there's also a lovely knitted heart in there too Looks like it's in the same yarn as that alpaca one, anyway. So that's all of my lovely things. So last week I showed you my lovely goodies from Fondant Fiber and the very, very generous gifts that Deb sent to be given away to you. And I asked you to come back this week so I could think of a question to ask you to answer in the thread. And so, I'll be giving away this. This is Honeymoon in Paris, Elliot DK, 55% Superwash BFL and 45% Mulberry Silk. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's got a lovely sheen. It's gorgeous. Just beautiful. And then also one of Deb's knitted soaps. This is in the mahogany scent. So those things were very, very kindly given to me to give away by Deb of fondant fibre. So thank you so much, Deb. And I was thinking about what I'd like to like you to answer. And one of my favourite things that I've got from fondant fibre is at Halloween, Deb did a knit kit and it was a bag with the clown from it the film well the book but the clown is from the film by Stephen King and it also had yarn and it had balloons and a little passage from the book and I it was so much fun to receive I loved it because I haven't bought a kit before and I love it Tim Curry I think is brilliant. He's fantastic in that film. And I do love Stephen King, so yes, it was a combination of lots of my favourite things in this really exciting kit. So I was wondering what thing, what film or book would you love a kit of? And if you just answer that in the thread that I'll put in the group. And it'd also be really interesting because I thought it was really fun that Deb put balloons in the kit because um, Pennywise is a clown and has balloons and I thought that was really really fun so what little thing would you put in? That's an optional question you don't have to answer that part because I, I'm sort of sending out telepathic brainwaves to Deb because I really want her to do a Halloween kit for Halloween because the Halloween films, I love them. They, they properly scare me. And there aren't many films that I find scary, but those ones, I think the combination of... Um, it's the no expression that does it for me. Really creepy. But yeah, I'm sending out telep telepathic brainwaves to Deb to try and get her to do a Halloween kit for Halloween this year. And I was thinking, well, what little thing would I put in a Halloween kit? I have absolutely no clue. <laughs> so you don't have to answer that bit if you don't want to, because I couldn't. But yes, if you could come into the group, if you would like to win this lovely yarn and the lovely knitter's soap, handmade knitter's soap from Deb, and just tell me what kit would you like? What film would you like a kit to be based on? I thought that would be quite interesting to read. So, thank you very much for joining me this week. I hope it hasn't seemed as haphazard to you as it did to me. 
while doing it. See, I can't even form proper sentences today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, but I hope you've had a lovely week and I hope you have a lovely week to come. So thank you so much for watching. Camera cut out. So um, yes, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next week. Oh, crap, Bobby. Should you say bye? Bye.